YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about a very useful tool that you can use in electronics, but it can be very confusing for new users. That tool is called Breadboard. As always, I want to personally thank the National Fluid Power Association for making these videos possible. If you would like more information on the National Fluid Power Association, just click on this link. So you might be asking yourself, why is this called a breadboard? It's just a board with a bunch of holes in it. Well, originally engineers used a piece of wood used to cut bread on to make their prototype circuits before creating an actual circuit board. I guess the name just kind of stuck and now these are referred to as solderless breadboards, even though they have nothing to do with bread nowadays. So there are many types of breadboards used across universities and college labs all over the world. You could have a breadboard like this classic breadboard that allows power and ground to come into the top by utilizing a banana plug and then the student can run a wire to the actual board and have a common power and ground rung. In this video we're going to be using the breadboard that is found in the electronic kit that is mentioned in the description that we will be used in every video because of its low price point. This is the same breadboard that I mentioned in the previous videos as well. So breadboards have bus strips that connect several rows together, which means that they share a current path and have continuity. Continuity simply means that electrical components are connected together. That's it. The first thing that anyone using a breadboard needs to do is to identify or find the bus strips and identify their paths so that you will know how to connect your circuits. We're going to use the continuity checker on our meter to determine the paths. This is much easier if you use alligator clips and a couple of jumper wires. You can either look for the resistance to equal zero, which simply means that there is a direct current path with no resistance, or you can set your meter to your continuity tester and listen for the buzzer. So let's identify the current paths in our breadboard. Okay, now that we've identified our current paths, if you could draw these paths out on the board, it would look something like this. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are larger breadboards that have a banana plug connection for an external power supply. The electronic kits that we'll be using actually have a small power supply that, that connects to your computer to get voltage for some of your experiments. You can see on the bottom that this power supply connects directly into our breadboard which applies voltage and ground to the bus strips that we can tap into for future experiments. Let's connect our power supply and we will check the voltage using the DC setting on our multimeter. Okay, so now that you've seen how to use a breadboard and hopefully you have a better understanding of their operation, we're going to be using this breadboard for our future experiments in some of these upcoming videos. 
I hope that this video has helped you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And once again, I want to have a special thank you to the National Fluid Power Association for making this video possible.